bringing the hands to heart center, closing the eyes if that feels comfortable and safe for you. Noticing the weight of the body. Noticing the legs, the hips, making contact. I'm sitting on a bolster. We want the hips to be elevated above the knees. So if you're sitting on a bolster or a blanket rolled up or a block, it's really helpful. That will help you elongate your spine. <clears throat> Imagine a cord or a string attached to the top of your head. And there's just a gentle pull upward on that string as you feel the weight of the body grounding down through the lower half. Noticing the breath. We'll open with Om and the mantra from my teacher, mantra for purification. Mantra for purification, I'll repeat and then you repeat. Om Pavitraha Pavitrava Sarva Vashtang Tatopiva Yaha Smarit Pongrikaksham Savahya Dientraha Suchihi <clears throat> All together once, you'll learn it over time. Om Pavitraha Pavitrava Sarva Vashtanga Topiva Yaha Smarit Pundrakaksham Savahya Dientraha Suchihi Good. Coming to standing at the top of the mat, move your props to the side, bring the hands to heart center, feet are hip width apart, lift the toes up, spread them apart, not too much, but just a little bit, feel all four corners of the feet. <sighs> and slight tuck of the tailbone down towards the earth, rolling the inner thighs in toward one another. This is gonna be a cue that we return to frequently. Inhale, lift the arms up and over the head, rise up, reach back, the hands are together. Looking up, reach back, bending the spine, strong in the stomach, strong in the core. Exhale, fold forward. And hang out here. If it's early in the morning, you might be stiffer. Bend into the knees. Allow the head to release. Already warming up. <laughs> Good. So just letting the head hang. And bring... Opposite hands to opposite elbows. Good. And hands to the mat. Step the right foot back. Back knee down. Look up. Collarbones wide. Now again, this might be more challenging for some. So just go into it maybe 50%. If it, again, if it's early, maybe you just go in 20% of the way. Most important part is that the heart is opening, collarbones are widening, looking up. And stepping back, plank pose. So in plank pose, the wrists are right under the shoulders. Lengthen through the heels, roll the inner thighs up towards the ceiling again, towards the sky. 
Bring the knees down, straight down from there. Chest goes in between the thumbs. Scoot back, yeah? <clears throat> chest goes in between the thumbs. This is knees, chest, and chin. Hips stay high. Hips stay high. Another option is to bring the hips back to the heels if that's too much. Good. Roll forward. Hands on either side of the chest here. Inhale up, cobra pose. Keep the hips and the hip bones rooted into the floor. Do not lift the hips off the floor here. This is cobra. It's different from up dog. Little wiggle. Again, roll the shoulders down and away from the ears. Some of us have to start here, bending into the elbows significantly so that the collarbones can widen. And then exhale, up and back, <clears throat> downward facing dog. Now in downward facing dog, the heels do not have to touch. I want you to start with the knees bent to start to play with lengthening the spine. And the belly button is tucking in towards the spine. Index finger and middle finger pointing straight ahead. Spread the fingers, just not too much. Lifting the tailbone higher. Over time, the legs will start to lengthen, but do not sacrifice the lengthening of the spine for straightening the legs. We're not attached to straightening the legs right away. Nice deep breaths here, in and out of the nose, ujjayi pranayam. Sounds like the waves of the ocean, in and out of the nose. And then the right foot forward, in between the hands, if it doesn't quite make it, just walk it forward, no problem. Now another option here is to bring blocks here, okay? No problem. No ego about it. Just you do what's what your body's asking you to do. Okay, if it's too much, use blocks. And step the right, left to meet the right. Forward fold. Ah, good. And then slowly come up. Come to standing. Reach up and back. Hands together. Reach strong through the core. Bend into the spine. Exhale, hands to the heart. Good, and again, inhale, lift, up and back. Exhale, fold forward. Left foot back now, knee comes to the earth, collarbones wide, looking up. Nice deep breaths here. Stepping back, plank pose. Good, knees down, chest right in between the thumbs, chin to the floor, hips stay high. More hips back to the heels. Inhale, cobra pose. Again, hip bones stay on the earth, on the mat. Bend the elbows. You should feel this in your triceps, the backs of the arms. Tuck the toes, lift up, plank pose, back to downward facing dog. Good, left foot forward. Back knee down. Look up, wide in the collarbones. And right to meet the left, forward fold. Inhale, lift up, standing. Hands together, reach up and back. Exhale, hands to heart center. Close the eyes. Set your intention, your sankalpa, for the practice. Maybe there's something you'd like to dedicate your practice to today. This can change your whole practice when you de dedicate your practice to something greater or wiser than yourself. Good. Then every posture is an offering and it's not about you. It's not about ego. Good. Lift up and back. Reach. Exhale, fold forward. We'll move a little faster. Right foot back, knee down. Again, using blocks if you need them. Look up, collarbones wide. Step back, plank pose. Knees, chest, chin, or the hips back to the heels. Inhale, forward, cobra. Little wiggle here, maybe. Good, exhale, up and back, downward facing dog. Right foot forward, all the way in between the thumbs, walk it forward if it doesn't quite make it. 
Left to meet the right, forward fold, top of the mat. And inhale up, rise up, reach back. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, lift, rise. We link breath with movement, exhale, fold. <clears throat> Left foot back, knee comes down. Collarbones wide, pull the heart forward. Stepping back, plank pose. Knees down, chest between the thumbs or hips back to the heels. Inhale, forward, cobra pose, bhujangasana. Exhale, up and back, downward facing dog. <clears throat> and roll the upper arms away from one another. Create a space between the shoulders and the ears. Ten, you can keep bending the knees. This helps to lengthen the spine over time. Left foot forward, all the way, knee down. Look up, right to meet the left, forward fold. Inhale, lift, rise up, reach back. Exhale, hands to heart center. <clears throat> Good. Inhale, lift up, and forward fold, exhale. Right foot back, untuck the back toes now, interlace the fingers except for the index. This is Kali Mudra. Lift the arms up and back, wiggle the arms back behind the ears, but keep the space between the shoulders and the ears and the neck. You might not need to start with your arms bent. Over time, they'll straighten, look up. Good. Come up and out of the hips, walk the back foot, the front foot forward. Walk the front foot back so that the knees at a 90 degree angle. Open the arms up into a T. Left hand comes down inside of the left foot. Right arm goes up. Look towards the right thumb. Good. Release the hand down. Step back. Plank pose. Knees, chest and chin or the hips to the heels. Bhujangasana, cobra pose. <sighs> Exhale up and back, downward facing dog. Tuck the chin in towards the chest so that your gaze goes towards the navel. And navel up towards the spine. Right foot forward all the way in between the hands. Back knee down, untuck the back toes now. Interlace the fingers except for the index. Kali Mudra. Looking up and back. Play with percentages here. How much do you need today? Just go towards the edge. Don't push it too much. Look up, reach back, good. And come up and out. Walk the front foot back so that the knees at a 90. Tuck the back toes under. You can kind of swivel it back so that You've got a bit of a tripod going there. Arms at a T, right hand inside of the right foot, looking up towards the left thumb. Arms should be in one straight line. Hopefully mine are. <laughs> nice deep breaths here. Good, and both hands down, frame the foot, step back, plank pose. Knees, chest, chin, or the hips back to the heels. Inhale forward, Bhujangasana, Cobra, hips connected to the earth still. Exhale up and back, downward facing dog. Five deep breaths here. Good. And from here, left foot forward in between the hands. Back foot down at a 90 or 45 degree angle. Warrior one, Virabhadrasana one. Hands together above the head, look towards the thumbs. 90 degree bend in the front leg, if that's accessible for you. Good. And then open the arms out. Warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Gaze is out beyond the front hand. Sinking into the back, into the front leg. 
And then hand to the inside. Again, you can use a block here. Block inside of the foot. Parjvakanasana side angle pose. Looking towards the ceiling. A few deep breaths here. Strong through the back leg, especially if that front one is burning. You want to strengthen through the back leg. And let's bring the back knee down. Again, just like our pose from before, both knees at a 90 degree angle, tuck the back toe. Now, right arm goes up. A couple of options here for a twist. First one, <clears throat> right hand outside of the left knee. Look over the back shoulder. Release the shoulders towards the earth. Oop, a little wobbly today. <sighs> Good, second option, hook the right arm around the left leg, hands come together in prayer. You can also play with putting the left hand into a fist, pressing the heart open. We want the collarbones to be wide here. You don't wanna be collapsing into the spine. If you're collapsing into the spine, go to the previous version until you're opening there. Look up. Third option is a bind. This is if you've been practicing a while. Roll the shoulders open, collarbones are wide. Look up. And come back. Both hands inside of the left foot, walk the left foot out. <clears throat> Untuck the back toes under and rock forwards and back as you lift the knee up and off the floor. <clears throat> Good. Step back. Plank pose. Knees, chest, and chin. Inhale. Cobra Bhujangasana. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Tuck the chin. Knees might still be bent, lengthen the spine, roll the shoulders away from the ears. Right foot forward, all the way in between the hands. Back foot down at a 45 degree angle. Make sure your stance is wide enough. Should be a little less than one of your leg lengths long. Hips face the front of the mat. <clears throat> this is actually more advanced than warrior two. So if you're having a ch challenging time Squaring the hips off to the front of the mat. That's okay. It takes time. Open the arms up. Vida Bhajrasana 2. Warrior 2. Nice deep bend into the front knee. But only go as far as feels like you can stay in your body. Good. Right hand down in between or inside of the right foot. Parjvakanasana. Now there's different options of, with the block, right? can be here, here, or here. Wherever you are is exactly where you need to be. No judgment about where you might be in your practice. Good, and then let's bring the back knee down. Both knees at a 90. Here's our twist again, left arm up. First option, hand outside of the right knee. Look over the back shoulder. Soften the eyes. Second option, hook the left arm around the right leg, hands in prayer. Forearms are in one straight line. Press the heart up towards the thumbs, look up towards the sky. And third option, bind. Again, that's for more advanced practitioners. Do not push it. Do not hurt yourself. Look up. Good. And then release both hands inside of the right left foot. Walk the, left, the right foot out, excuse me. Back, toes tuck. You can also come here again, right? You've got your blocks. <clears throat> Rock forwards and back. Mm, collarbones go wide. If you're noticing that the back wants to round, that means that you're not open enough yet. Just keep pulling the heart forward, use your blocks. 
Good, and then step back. Plank pose, knees, chest, and chin. Inhale forward, cobra pose, bhujangasana. Exhale up and back, down dog. And step both feet forward in between the thumbs. Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, lift, rise up, reach back, hands together in prayer. Exhale the hands to the heart. Closing the eyes if it feels okay for you. Remember your intention, your sankalpa. Every practice, every posture is an offering to something greater or wiser than yourself. And remember that when you heal yourself, you are part of a whole, so you're healing the whole. Good. Okay, now, a couple of options here. Watch me first. I'm going into headstand practice, but if you're new to the practice, it's okay. You do not need to go into headstand. <laughs> That's if you've been practicing a while. So first option, hair pose. Top of the head goes about a foot from the knees onto the mat. Lift the hips up. Okay, the hips are above the head here. Tops of the hands onto the mat. Straighten the arms. Close the eyes. Bring your attention to the third eye, the space between the eyebrows. Beginners, start here. Stay here. You're going to stay here for as long as you can. If you need a break, come out. Child's pose. Relax, and then go back. We'll be here for a little while. Intermediate and advanced students, interlace the fingers, tuck the bottom finger under so it's not getting squished, right? And then the hands are gonna go to the, uh, like where baby's soft spot is, right there. So the top of the head's gonna be on the floor. Again, forearms go about a foot from the knees, tuck the toes. You might start here. Okay, lift the hips up. You might just stay here until you can work to getting maybe one toe, one foot to come off the earth, that or the other. Maybe eventually you lift up, lift out of the shoulders. Okay, most of the weight's in my forearms, not my head and my neck. Okay. Lifting the legs. If you've been practicing for a long time, if you have full lotus pose, take full lotus. Closing the eyes. Bring your attention to the space between the eyebrows. Okay. Be there for as long as you can. Release. If you need a break, then you come into hair pose. Good. Third option, similar to the one before for intermediate and advanced students. Head about a foot from the knees. Tripod headstand, the hands come down <clears throat> to the mat. Lift the hips. You lift one leg. Maybe you just play with this, okay? See how that feels? You can stay right here. Work to bring the elbows in so they're parallel. We don't want any arms out here that's going to compromise your wrists. Maybe play with lifting one leg, maybe the other. Eventually, bring one leg, one knee to the backs of the arms, and the other. Hang out here. This is like an inverted crow pose. <sighs> Lift out of the shoulders. If you've been practicing a while, you lift up, straighten the body, full lotus, you can come into full lotus here, and then eventually release, knees, the upper arms, come down, and take a break. So beginners, if you were in your hair pose the whole time, you should still be in hair pose. Well, while I'm giving the instructions for the other options, if you know where you are in that practice, then stay in your pose while I'm talking, okay? 
Don't stop as I'm giving the other instructions once, once you get the hang of the practice, okay? <clears throat> so another five breaths or so there in your variation of headstand. <sighs> Good, and then release, come out. And we're going into shoulder stand. Okay, Sarvangasana. This is the queen of all the postures. Headstand is the king. So starting here, if you need a block, you can start. If you're a beginner or you're on your moon and it doesn't feel comfortable for you, you are welcome to just bring your legs up. You could go up against a wall, put the legs up the wall so that the butt is maybe a few inches from the wall. Or you can just stay here. Second option, place a block underneath the tailbone. Okay, we're gonna start to invert. You might need to kind of move your hair around. Okay, third option, really gentle here. The feet stay beyond the head. We're not straightening the body out. You might just kind of let the hips soften into the hands. Maybe even keep the legs bent. Again, doing what's right for your body. Not mine, not anybody else's. It's your body. You choose. Close the eyes. Bring all the attention to the space between the eyebrows. If you know you can straighten the body all the way, go ahead. Kind of tuck the upper arms underneath the body as you straighten. Closing the eyes. This is wonderful for your body. It has so, has so many benefits. Good, and then release the hands or the feet, excuse me, behind the head. Make sure you have enough room you might start here with the feet off the floor. Many of us will start here as the spine opens. As the body adjusts to the, pra adjusts to the practice, over time the toes will come to the earth, but don't do that if you can't straighten the legs. Keep the hands at the low back. This is plow pose. If you're more intermediate, advanced, and the toes can stay on the floor with the legs straight, you'll interlace the fingers. Oops. Interlace the fingers, straighten the arms, tuck them under the body a little more if you can. Close the eyes. Good. Then release the hands to the earth. Hands are hip width apart or shoulder width apart, slowly rolling down vertebra by vertebra, not too fast, with control. Ah, heels. Heels come a few inches beyond the hips, so you can touch the heels with the fingers. Then lift up. You might start with a block if you're new. And just notice that what that's like. Ah, oh, gentle, easy bridge pose. You might then adjust over time to a higher setting on the block. And eventually, if you can come here with the block fully at its, at its longest setting, then you need to remove the block. You don't need the block anymore. And interlace the fingers. Straighten the arms. You can also bring the hands to the low back. Okay. But I like interlacing the fingers and then feel the quads, the front of the legs engaging. Release the glutes a little bit, but feel the strength in the legs, in the back, holding you up. Good. And then release. Bring the knees into the chest. Give yourself a nice big hug. Rock side to side. 
Massaging the spine. Good, and then both hands, or hands to the outside edges of the feet for happy baby. Notice that the heels are right above the knees. They're not in like this. They're not uh, back here. Okay, over time, the heels are right over the knees. Rock side to side here. Press the knees in towards the armpits. Hmm. Nice, easy, gentle releasing. It's just, this helps release the low back. Good. And then bring the knees back in. Rock forwards and back. Just massaging the spine again. One of my teachers likes to always say, you're only as young as your spine. Okay, so if the spine is not healthy, we will feel old. If the spine is healthy, we feel young. The body is young. Okay. And then coming, straightening the legs out and lifting the arms up. Now bend the knees again. Bring the belly in contact with the thighs as you reach forward. Widen the collarbones. This is Paschimottanasana. Forward fold, another forward fold. Over time, the legs will start to straighten. Okay. Only go as far as the belly can stay in contact with the thighs and you can keep the collarbones wide. As soon as the spine starts to round, you're not doing a whole lot. You're not gonna make progress. Make much faster progress if you bend the knees, keep the spine long. Look towards the toes and then close the eyes. Gentle tuck of the chin. Bring all the attention to the base of the spine. Imagine a red light at the base of the spine. Good. Release. Left leg stays long. Yeah. Left leg stays long. Right leg over the left. Right hand back behind you. Lift the left arm up. And again, multiple options here with a twist. You can start with the hand outside of the knee, widen the collarbones, look over the back shoulder. With every inhale, you lift through the crown of the head. With every exhale, you twist a little deeper. Closing the eyes. Second option, if you're more open, tuck the left arm around the right knee. Third option, bend that bottom leg under, pull the left foot in, left arm goes up, you start here, hooking the, the arm around the leg and then eventually you'll bind. Breathe. So good for your digestion, these twists, especially when you breathe down deep into the belly as you twist. Different energy points that touch when we twist and breathe. Energy points in the, in the gut. Good, and release. Switching sides. Whatever you did on the side before, do that now. Do the same thing. Right, arm, right leg goes long, left leg over the right. If you're taking one of the beginner poses, then you keep the foot beyond the knee. Right arm goes up. Start with your first option. And you might come here. Index finger and thumb come together. Gyana mudra. So the individual self bowing to the supreme self, divine consciousness, divine unity our individual selves bowing to the one. Good. Intermediate advanced option, bending that bottom knee under, pull that top leg back here, hooking, then binding over time. Remember there's no attachment to the outcome of each pose. Every pose is an offering to something greater or wiser than yourself. Close the eyes, lift, good, and release. 
Now, coming into Shavasana, I really recommend these, these bolsters are from Brentwood Home. I really like them. I also like them from Manduka or Hugger Mugger. And then if you have a blanket, you can use that now. The body gets pretty cool as, as it relaxes. You always want to have a blanket nearby or I like to have like long scarves. If I'm traveling, I'll use that. Good. And then palms face the sky. Roll the shoulder blades underneath the back. Roll the shoulder blades underneath the back. Closing the eyes, finding stillness. Allow the body to become absolutely still. As we become still, it's like we have muddy water inside and the mud, the dirt settles to the bottom. The water becomes clear. Shavasana is the most important pose of the whole practice. Do not skip it. Even if you have to leave early, absolutely have to take Shavasana. It consolidates all the moving energy that you just created. You'll feel weird over time. You'll notice if I didn't do Shavasana, you feel weird. Get any last movements out. And then find stillness. Bringing some movement to the fingers and the toes, keeping the eyes closed. You might stretch if you'd like. And come onto one side of the body or the other and rest in the fetal position. Keep the eyes closed here. And then slowly, again, keeping the eyes closed, bring yourself to seated. Remove your blanket. You can come back to your bolster. For a block, you can fold the blanket underneath your hips, just as long as the hips are above the knees. Spine is nice and long. Finish with Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Shanti means peace. 
Namaste. Thank you for sharing the practice.